Sandshrew, the mouse Pokemon. First introduced into Kanto region, good old number 27 has been a staple to the franchise ever since its introduction. This cute rodent-like Pokemon has large black eyes, a white stomach, and a yellow back covered in durable scales. When threatened, they will curl into a ball, preserving themselves from predators who are incapable of piercing their shell. While you may initially think Sandshrew's origins are pretty obvious, this could actually not be further from the truth. If you're not already aware of what Sandshrew is actually based on, and if you are, why are you here? Go watch the Talonflame episode or something. Three animals probably come to your mind initially. Mice, Shrews, and Armadillos. The first two are obvious candidates because of the Pokemon's name and classification, and the third because it matches Sandshrew's iconic defensive curl behavior, which is actually called Vulvation, something I didn't know before researching this episode. While some characteristics of these animals do fit the Pokemon, since the Mouse and Shrew lack the Vulvation ability altogether, I wouldn't be comfortable considering these two for the role whatsoever. Even so, the Armadillo is not an exact match either. From the hairy stomach, plated forehead, and pig-like snout, they certainly took many liberties if this really was the animal of inspiration. Even the armadillo's plates aren't quite accurate either, so what gives? <laughs> well, what if I were to tell you there's a super secret unlockable fourth option that made an appearance every time you kept your GameCube on for 20 hours straight? A super super secret super option that shared even more characteristics with Sandrew than the other three animals combined? This animal exists. Allow me to introduce you to the Pangolin. The penguin is a small animal of eight different species that can be found in parts of Asia and Africa. Right away? Come on, I've seen more convincing fake mustaches. From scale arrangement to the general silhouette, this animal is a much closer match than the armadillo. And before you ask, yup, this guy volvates with the best of them. While the yellow coloring may be a bit cartoonish, if we look back to Sandshrew's red and blue sprites, we can see the colors are much more subdued than in the modern interpretation. Finally, this is the largest factor pointing to the penguin connection, and it actually doesn't come from Sandshrew, but rather its evolution Sandslash. In Japan, this Pokemon is called Sandpan. Uh, they literally took the first half of Penguin and stuck it at the end of Sand. I mean, at least this Pokemon's named better than Sandshrew. In Japan, it's literally just named Sand. And in America, they literally just did the same thing Japan did for Sandslash, but they got the damn animal wrong. While on the topic of Sandslash, I do also believe it's heavily inspired by the pangolin. However, while its quills do somewhat look like the scales of the tree pangolin, as they share a color scheme and this species of pangolin actually have their scales stick outward, I think they're actually inspired by the African crested porcupine's quills instead, as they're also rounded off and not necessarily scale-like. So, I would consider Sandslash to be more of a nondescript hybrid pangolin porcupine-like animal. As for Sandshrew, I mentioned there are eight species of pangolin, so which species do I think is the closest? Well, the one I initially was drawn to was the giant ground pangolin. Not only is Sandshrew a ground-type Pokémon, but the pangolin possesses a light brown body color similar to the Pokémon's initial sprite. That said, all pangolin species do burrow and mainly habitate in primary and secondary jungle, so for the sake of simplicity, the spirit of Sandshrew, it's probably just a generic pangolin. Okay, I do admit that is somewhat of an unsatisfying answer, so if we were to look solely based on color, Original Sandshrew is closest to the giant ground pangolin as I mentioned, and modern Sandshrew is closest to the Indian pangolin. As for the Alolan forms, these variants can actually be explained by the pangolin as well, most notably in their habitat. A unique thing about this animal is they actually become active earlier in the day during the cold season. While this doesn't necessarily mean they're active more often, it is an interesting behavior you wouldn't necessarily expect. All species exist in areas where it snows during winter months, and Chinese pangolins even live in higher elevations in order to avoid predators. And according to Alola lore, the reason these Pokémon take on snowy appearances is because they also took to higher mountains in order to avoid Alola's volcanoes, truly the apex predator of small mammals. So, it seems the story of the Alolan forms parallels the Chinese pangolin. Now, Chinese pangolin of course don't actually look like these two, but the Alolan forms are inspired by snow-like features, such as Sandslash's quills being replaced with icicles, and Sandshrew's scales taking on an igloo shape. Surprisingly enough, however, Alolan Sandshrew is more accurate to actual pangolins in one area in particular, and it has to do with their vulvation strategies. 
Cantonian sand shrew rolls into a ball by tucking its head into its stomach and rolls like a wheel, which is more similar to the armadillo's method. Whereas the Alolan form spins the opposite way, curling its tail across its body and spinning kind of like a hockey puck. This method is much, much closer to how penguins actually vulvate, which is a nice adjustment to closer resemble their animal of interest. While penguins are pretty cool animals with unique characteristics, sadly, they may soon disappear. Penguins are the most trafficked animal in the world. They are poached for their meat and blood, but the primary reason is due to their unique scales, which are used in traditional medicines in China. Each year, over 100,000 pangolins disappear from the planet. That's a little less than 10,000 a month, 300 a day, 12 an hour. While watching this video, there's an over 50% chance a pangolin was killed somewhere on Earth. Of the eight extant species, six are listed as endangered or critically endangered, and the other two are on the brink of also being classified this way. Truly, this Pokemon represents a tragic truth of the world's black market trade. That said, there is hope. In 2020, pangolin scales were listed as an illegal substance in Chinese medicine, ending the centuries-long tradition. Actually, a large part of this was due to a plausible theory that an individual sold on the wet market started... a certain worldwide event often accredited to bats. But, continued preservation efforts and pressure to get protective legislation for these animals played a large part as well. While these animals aren't out of the thick of it yet, there is hope for their future. Subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed this episode, and leave in the comments what single fictional animal you'd like me to cover in the future. Thank you for watching, and continue to explore the Biodiverse. <laughs>